I think another thing that you guys should be proud about is the sense of loyalty that this kid has shown to the state of I'm not here to try to bash anyone that's not here. Uh, everybody has a choice. I'm not saying that you don't have a choice. Everybody has a choice. And when I saw that he chose to stay here in Oklahoma, uh, I was so proud and as, as Clay know and as, as Russ know, I was, I was, I text him to show a sense of respect. Okay, first of all. Stay man. <laughs> a little Drake in here. <laughs> Michael's a little sweaty there. I thought yeah. we had like a crying Jordan moment. <laughs> Whoa, what's happening? It's hard <laughs> to look at him now. Flew all the way out there. With that, well, he's it. Russell is Michael's brand Jordan guy, yeah, right? It's a big deal. Welcome back. That was a portion <laughs> of Michael Jordan's induction speech for Russell Westbrook into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. And look, you heard him say loyalty. There was a not very subtle dig at Kevin Durant there. Tracy, loyalty is such a loaded word in sports, right? It's wielded by owners. What do you think of what Michael said? Uh... I like that he said that because mm -hmm. it is true. Okay. Um, I even was excited that Russ signed back with OKC, uh, being that he was one of the first guys to play for this franchise here in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think this will just add to his legacy that he's steady writing. Uh, when he's long done playing basketball, he will always forever be a rock star in the city of um, Oklahoma City. You know, regardless of what happens, his life after basketball will be great in, in that state as well because this guy leaves everything out on the basketball court. Oh, so so you can appreciate a guy coming back um, to join that franchise. Well, I think this is a case of both things being true, right? right? Is Michael Jordan excited that Russ is loyal to the state, to the Thunder? Does he also uh, appreciate Russell's game? Yes, th those things are true. But does he, as the owner of a small market franchise, also appreciate that a star would stay with a small yeah. market franchise after another star would leave. Yes, guess who asked Russell Westbrook? Guess who asked Michael to come out? Clay Bennett. Right. Like, it wasn't it was Russell. It was the owner of the Oklahoma City Correct. Thunder who asked them. And, and, I mean, that's the thing. Look, I, I love that Russ is getting, as you said, good, good positive feedback for the decision he made. We do have to be realistic. He only added one year to his deal. Correct. Last year, it was <laughs> Kevin Durant who was being honored at this exact same ceremony, uh -huh. exact same ceremony, and now he's gone. Westbrook was up on that exact stage. A and look, you have to ask, is it smart for him to stay loyal to Oklahoma City? Because in about a year, he's going to have to make that decision. Sam Presti is going to come to him and say, Are you think you're staying or not? Because if not, they're going to have to deal him because they can't get nothing for nothing right. again. So I don't know. Is, this, is it smart for him to do it? I know mean, you've talked before about not wasting your prime years, right? I do, and I think you put the onus on the ownership to make some things happen to keep him happy there to uh, to resign back. Look, they, that team was not built around Russell Westbrook. That was a team built for Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. So now Sam Presti's going to have to reconfigure He's got a year on the play. to figure it out. Yeah, he had to play defense. He had to keep the young guys and resign them to extensions because they don't get extra salary cap room. They just have to keep everyone that they have. But now is the part where you get creative, and if they're able to do that and keep Russell and on, on a team where he thinks he can win. Then I think he, he'll maybe, feel fine about it. Maybe that. All right, do you want to switch over to Portland because the struggle was real last <laughs> night. It's real. The Blazers were on the wrong end of a 17-point loss to the Rockets. They're now seven and six. And afterwards, Damian Lillard, well, he voiced his frustration. We kind of suck right now, he said. It is that simple. I, I love how we need a whole screen to show this. Um, I mean, I love the honesty, but Tracy, we all also talked earlier this week when the Wizards Marcin Gortat got a little too critical of his own team, right? There is Locker room, you, you got to be careful of the guys in your locker room, right? Not really, because this is your best player. This is exactly. the leader of your team. This is not like this is the 10th man on a roster. This okay. is your best player, a MVP caliber guy. And guys, last <laughs> night, the <laughs> national TV audience got a look at some of the young and coming teams in the NBA. The Sixers, the Timberwolves, and the Jazz. Now, Utah, well, we've been hearing for years, right? The Jazz are about to make some noise. The roster, very balanced. The players, very talented. The coach, very good. For the Jazz, the goal is clear here. Stop just being the darlings of the insider crowd and actually, you know, become a force to be reckoned with on the court. And for the most part, they have been doing that. Last night, they, they were missing two of their starters, so we got to cut them a break there. But when their full talent has been available, they've been nearly unbeatable. As for the Sixers, well, in their own way, they have clear standards for success as well. 
no one's expecting them in the postseason. Frankly, no one's expecting them to win many games. But hey, if Joel Embiid can stay healthy and measurably de- develop, that's a win. And if the fan base, you know, can feel something other than hopeless despair every time a Sixers score <laughs> flashes across their phones, that is another win, too, people. Where things get more complicated is with the Timberwolves. They're clearly the best collection of young talent in the NBA. Their roster just crackles with possibility every time you pick it up. And while last season they were thrown into a tailspin by the sad death of Flip Saunders, this year, this year things are different. They have one of the elite coaches in the league. They have players like Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns for whom the standard, well, it's moved past, frankly, what it is with Embiid, just that question of are you developing? And, and look, there is no doubt Wiggins has been a revelation this season. He is leading the league in three-point percentage. Ooh. Leading, and not just by a little. But there is a difference between scoring and winning. And to me, this is the year that winning has to be more of what we judge this team by. Carl Towns sat on the jump set with me and Tracy last spring and told us his bar for success this season would be making the playoffs. Well, right now the Wolves are 4-7 and seven and not really close to that track. My hope is that the win over the Sixers last night is the start of them turning the corner. Because at 11 games in, you, you certainly don't need to be in playoff shape yet. But you do need to at least look like you know what that is. So, guys, I, I was going to ask Tracy this first, but, you know, he's got his phone out. He's texting Carl <laughs> Anthony Towns right now. Probably. I know. Hold <laughs> he's on, like, Wait, what, what should I be saying? Is it, my standard for success Hold is on. they should be making the playoffs. What's Hold yours? on. Did you say in your monologue that that win last night, you think they should have turned the corner? Did they, they play the Spurs last night? <laughs> Or the go to state yeah. They did not snarf up the lead in the third quarter. That is a building block for this team, which maybe, by the way, the is too low sixes. a bar. Well, so okay, so are you? Do you agree with me that they're not as on track as they, they should be right now? They're they're definitely underachieving. Okay, um, I had high hope for these guys, uh, considering the talent level that mm-hmm. they they mm-hmm. have. Uh, with Wiggins being better, Anthony uh, Carl Towns, he's be, uh, becoming better, and the pieces that they have. You suspected that they came into the season strong, and then you add an elite coach right. to this bunch, but then you look at Kevin Garnett's going. No leadership. It's a bunch of young talent, but no real leadership. Well, you're also there. learning, though, how to play in the system that Tom Thibodeau is installing there, and that's another leap forward. But if I would have told you at the beginning of the season that the Lakers would be 7-5 and five and the Timberwolves <laughs> would be 4-7, and seven, right. wouldn't you have said, no, no, don't you have that reversed? Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. the Timberwolves, the Lakers are right now where you thought the Timberwolves would be, and vice versa. I, I, I'm, I think it's too soon to say anything about this about that team right there. But when I saw Carl Towns play yesterday, like you knew he was coming. You knew he was oh, good. Man. But I, I was texting with GM, scouts, everybody yesterday. He has arrived. He's arrived. Yeah. When, he, he, when he went over through and beat and then over that time, I mean, that was amazing. Yeah, was I didn't know he had that move. above the rim. This is 11 games into the season. I mean, these guys still have a lot of time to turn it around. They're a young bunch. Out. Absolutely, but there is a devil's advocate here, too, that winning is a cultural thing, right? Mm-hmm. And that you have to start having that culture of winning, just like, yeah, you've improved. Isn't this great? Well, well they're start, they started with adding tips to this collection of talent. Right. So um, hopefully, you know, it, these guys learn the from this. The defense should mistake. be a little better. It the should. third quarter they're stuff young. should be to they're, get they're a little young. bit better. I would like to see uh, Carl Anthony Towns be a little bit more aggressive now that he has all these tools, how to use them. Towns and Embiid, of course, went head-to-head last night. And, and you know, it's, it's always fashionable, right? We were all on Anthony Davis and then everyone switched to Carl Anthony Towns last year and then now everyone's mm-hmm. all excited by Joel Embiid. Who do you think has the stronger upside long term? This is tough. Both of these guys are phenomenal talents. Um, Embiid with his footwork reminds me reminds Ooh, me a little bit of Dream? Of, of dream. Oh, with, with his footwork. Oh, mm-hmm. With his footwork. You don't see guys oh. in our league today doing stuff like this. That is this so, I young. love that Seriously. side to side. So show that again. This it's is so it's much hard fun. <laughs> to say both of their ceilings are extremely high because right. they're both talented guys. I, I will have to pick, you know, close my eyes and just pick one. So do it. Pick one. <laughs> I have to touch him. I mean, he's okay. All right. Well, I will pick one. Go. I'll say Carl Towns. Okay. Because I think Carl's got a more well-rounded game. Plus, mm-hmm. 
He doesn't. Okay, I'm gonna knock on wood as I say this. Okay, it's glass, so is that right. enough? <laughs> like <laughs> he doesn't have problems. injury history. Yeah. He's not on a minutes restriction. I mean, look at him shoot. He's got a three point game. He is like a, He's a five, but a, he's a stretch five. He's got an above the rim game. He is so skilled. And, he is. And you know, just maturity wise, you've had him on the show. You've yeah, talked to him. Yeah, he is. I remember polished, talking to like him. Crazy. Talking to him last year, and we did this interview where like the mics weren't working, the camera wasn't working. He was sitting there waiting around 20 minutes. And we're all trying to stall, right? And right. he was telling me kind of what his summer was like. And I remember him saying, he goes, yeah, I really like being out in Los Angeles. I would actually just, like, go out and walk around. And I'm like, what do you mean walk around? He was like, yeah, I just walked down Melrose. And I'm like, just by yourself? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I'm fine. With it. And, it, and I've never heard a kid that young go around, like, Los Angeles, just being curious right. about the world, curious about his place, and not needing a ton of people around right. him to validate right. him. And right. I do his think you're right, though, job. about a veteran, because they, uh, Rubio, obviously, is a better, more veteran presence on the floor. I don't know if in the locker room he's the one to teach you about the culture of winning, just because he's yeah. been in that yeah. franchise yeah. where they haven't had that. You kind of wonder if that makes a difference. I, I just got in my... Can we show it again? Can we, Danny? Producer Danny is telling me we can show it you're again. Showing, can we show it again? <laughs> yes, we can show it. Come on, show that. Side by side. Look at that. That's so and good. That's so good. <laughs> Please show the other Thank one. you, producer Danny. Boom. Oh, that's so good. That's it's like nice I think you studied work. like a few. I love it. I love eights. that. I think I could just watch that on a loop. I yeah. do want to move on to Chandler Parsons, that. though, because oh, look, <laughs> the story has gotten so good today, even. We know Parsons signed the $94 million deal with Memphis in July. Still plenty of hard feelings for Mavs fans. Memphis plays at Dallas tonight, and Parsons had this to say, quote, So when it comes to Dallas, you're going to get mad at me because Dirk decided to take less money to bring in a real good player. That what? No, a really good player. And then, <laughs> unfortunately, he gets hurt. That's why you're mad? Sure. Boo me. Look, this is just the latest in what's been quite a saga. If you have not read the amazing ESPN.com article that Tim McMahon put out this morning, <laughs> you really need to go to the website. Yeah. The story details all of the carousing that Chandler and Mark Cuban used to do together, how things went wrong. I mean, Ramona, is this really about where the line should be between a player and an owner? Because it seems like it's caused incredible hard feelings. Yeah, I thought that was a great article that Tim had because one of the, one of the issues that he got into was simply – when, when Chandler was like, he was so close to Mark Cuban that in a lot of ways, the people around Mark Cuban presented it, right? right? Dirk Nowitzki, Rick Carlisle, Donnie Nelson. These are other guys who run the franchise. Again, because and of a lot of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Go read the story. Yeah. It was Chandler like Parsons clubs. Is a smart and, man. Right? He knew who to go go hang out well, with, he right? he flat out said, Mark Cuban is my guy. He is a, he is an owner who's believed and supported me, and that's why we were so close. Bought but me a lot of alcohol. Just the... Just the, the amount that they were strategizing about how the Mavs should be built right. is inherently threatening to everybody else, not to mention he's he got hurt two years in a row. So if you're going to give $94 million to a guy with those with that injury history, you better be really sure that that's the one you want to build your franchise around. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I think he needs to go back and give Dirk Nowitzki uh, his money. Just a little check. He, he needs to write him a check, uh, give the whole organization back their money. Dirk's the one who, who said yes. Like, nobody's it, it, twisting it, Dirk's arm. You know, Dirk doesn't even have an agent. Cor like, correct. Dirk is just a guy who is honest, takes things as they come. Yeah, but, I mean. <laughs> loyal. Give $94 million some, to somebody that's proved their, their worth, you know, prior to coming to your, your organization, not based off of a friendship. He so got $94 million off of a friendship, not because. Well, well nobody what, twisted Memphis' arm. I was going to say, why do you think Memphis gave him that money, though? Who else they were going to give it to? <laughs> this guy, this is this is the one guy in history. You could have gone back down. I, I, you know, I'm sure. <laughs> Portland was going to offer this, him this a guy too. That, I thought our league was like, what have you done for me lately? Like, what have you ever done for me <laughs> like, to get two max deals? One of the best parts of Tim's story Hats off to was... Hats off right, right, <laughs> You're like, hating, but not also admiring right there. Yeah. I know you well enough to know this now. Like, one of the best parts of Tim's story was where he talked about when when it became clear that the Mavs just wanted Chandler to accept the one-year right, right. 16 million that he had left on his deal, like not opt out of his player option. Um, Mark Cuban apparently stopped returning his text messages and just calls. Just like someone else we know who... DeAndre Jordan? Mm, just there just we a go. Little just a little DeAndre Parsons Jordan move there. Hate. There we go. All right, before we go to break, I do want to take a minute. Don't hate, to Tracy. Well, I never this hate. Is nice. This is a nice story.
<laughs> we want to welcome back the Pelicans, Drew Holiday. Right? This is lovely. He's returning to the court tonight. If you haven't been following this story, it's been a roller coaster. Drew is married to Lauren Holiday. Yes, that's the same Lauren Holiday who won two gold medals and a World Cup title as a member of the U.S. women's soccer team. But this past year, Lauren, who was pregnant with the couple's first child, was diagnosed with a brain tumor. In the months since, the family has seen the baby safely delivered. The tumor in Lauren's brain has been removed. And now Drew feels she's strong enough he can now return to the court. We've talked about the Pelicans' problems a lot on this show, and they are still real. But it is important to note how incredibly supportive the organization has been of Drew and of Lauren. They have gone way above and beyond, pretty much on every level. And we were just talking a little bit about how sports is a business, and that is true. But one of the special things about the NBA is that sometimes, sometimes it's also not. So when Drew walks onto the court tonight, both he and the team deserve a hearty round of applause. Right, guys? Welcome right. back, Absolutely. Drew. I know AD awesome. misses you. Exactly. That is true.